in general as we are going to swap sides here for this one. And the bands hilariously might stay the same despite the side swap of C9 Picket. I started off with Kennen and Peach responded with LeBlanc again. Swap sides, bands might stay the same. We'll have Maybe. to see. Um, and to your point about perks, he actually has had a really good series yep. so far. It's been overshadowed a little bit by Blabber after that, that last one game. game. Sure. Yeah, uh, but the Cinch was really good. Game one, game two on the rise had a lot of nice follow-up plays actually. Um, and so overall, I think he's, he's had a pretty nice series. All right, well, Olaf is going to finally change things up here. Leona continuing to be banned, but actually Ooh. on the other side this time, Peace were banning it on blue. Now Cloud9 feel like they want to do the same thing here. I wonder if that's telegraphing the MF first pick, given that the fact uh, that's been taken away first by Peace both games. Leona can just drop her ult on top of uh, the MF, as well as the fact that as on a mobile carry, and Leona have a ton of gauge, it's just annoying to put MF into it. So maybe this uh, is saying, hey, we're feeling pretty good. Let's just swap it up a little bit, grab the MF ourselves, force the Violet onto something else. Taking their time with their first pick here. Uh, lost the Zoe, the potential pick there. Looks like Lee Sin is the champion they most care about. That's going to be Blabber's champion here, most likely. Yeah, going back onto that, uh, game one, it was he, uh, Blabber on Lee, Babip on, on Zin Zhao. They yep. swapped it around. They had the, the Lee takeaway for Babip, and Blabber answered with the Olaf. Yeah. Without the Olaf on the table, he's like, no, no, I want that Lee again. Maybe staying away from Zin, maybe just feeling comfy, maybe feeling like, you know what, we can handle him, man. Happy to give it back to the me. Maybe not happy, actually. Pilot looking very good on the champion in two games. Game one, definitely the more standout one, but still feeling very comfy. As you mentioned, Peace definitely playing through their bot lane uh, so far in the series, and I imagine that will continue. So it might just take uh, support here. It might feel like there's nothing so good that you have to take it right now. So perhaps you give themselves maybe some counter pick chances there in pick three. A lot of discussion it looks like here, but Babip is going to line up the next champion, and the boy goes to Italy for potentially their final game of this world. All right, Babip going back to one of his most comfort champions in a do-or-die game here. Uh, one of the reasons that it's so good for Peace is just Babip's individual skill on it, but as we talked about before, potentially unlock unlocking some of the champions in Tally's pool. Um, so I can see why they're going for it here, being like, okay, the physical jungler AP mid's not working swap that relationship up on the flip side though C9 going back to something that's maybe gonna raise a few red flags for North American fans after that first game they definitely don't seem as practiced on this lane right I think Vulcan has definitely made a, a career in many ways on his engaged supports and playing the squishier more like range supports is definitely a different style of play not that they can't play it of course I assume it's something they practice something that they can be very good on but bring it out here again here maybe wanting to show that hey like that was not the that was not how it worked in practice let us show you what it actually looked like as it really is a cool pick here as well for peace so getting real spicy in some of these lanes here is the rise will be taken away from perks yeah, the Aurelia had been seeing a number of bans, and that's one of the things that got freed up with the changes to Peace on, on red side here. They grab it themselves. Blind can be a little dicey to do that, but uh, they have the backup of Nidalee. I'm sure it can be flexed around if needed. I don't know if Chachi wants to play Aurelia. It doesn't seem like it. Uh, I expect that to be going mid lane. Yep. Uh, so they're getting rid of some of the champions that uh, Tally would not want to play up against. An actual factual Yasuo ban <laughs> by Peace. Not Yone, Yasuo being banned away. That to me smells like uh, I want Na out of his Achachi. But we'll have to see. Poppy also banned away. I lo you love to see that. Yeah. Getting respect in. We'll see if they follow up with the other respect ban for Chachi in the Rumble. Uh, you said the Gnar. Potentially, I, I would be surprised if they did go Gnar. I don't think you need to ban Yasuo to go Gnar. Given that you already took out the Aurelia, you could ban the Camille instead, which is a far more likely uh, Gnar counter pick. I'm curious if Tally is worried about uh, Yasuo in the 1v1 then, maybe. That's what I would assume. Oh, but who knows? Oh, it does make sense, actually. I, oh, now my brain is. I'll have to remember it later. I can't remember if uh, Aurelia's E is a projectile or not. That's basically the thing that makes that matchup. It might be if uh, it's a ban here, but you know what? We'll figure that out later. That's fine. Not for today. We'll uh, have Rakan once again here for Aladaric. Looked great on it in game number one, yep. uh, especially in the early levels. Uh, it does seem like Cloud9 do want to mix up their damage profile a little bit. Gwen is a great way to accomplish that there. 
so there is going to be the pick that's presumably for fudge and that's kind of why i thought they were doing it because there's yone for perks yeah there we go the yone gonna come in they're gonna be if they oh, end up blocking yet. it Ooh, okay. the they're trigger mirror melee mid. another melee mid i mean it is still i was about to go into like a, this is a very aggressive team comp low range almost no cc lots of focus on just trying to kill people in one three one setups but even your one three one's a little whack if it's just lucian and uh nami in the mid lane but that's what we end up getting. And on the flip side, we get the set for Chachi, bringing some stability up to the top lane um, and giving them some setup for the Nidalee. Uh, it, it is a very strong combination. Those two champions that has a lot of CC if you to land easy spears. Uh, there is a bit of outplay potential though with the Gwen hallowed miss. You know, it's just hard to land skill shots from outside. You just get block them down. So the Nidalee will need to get inside if she wants to land a long range spear. Uh, you can get that before the Halimus comes out from the sun off, off the set, or you need to actually gap close first and then get all your damage out. Yep, definitely uh, some cool interactions there to look out for. Here's nice to see Chachi staying consistent. This has basically been his role since he emergency came onto the team as a substitute, definitely that nobody expected. Uh, I saw actually a Pabu, who was from Pentanet, uh, who had the honor of losing to Peace, who are now still here on the world stage, battling up against Cloud9, saying that, you know what, I don't know if anyone he had NA perks versus OCE visit Chachi on their bingo. Uh, I'm gonna guess probably not. That is not the timeline many would expect. No, that is a bit of a, a strange matchup for both these players to end up in those situations. But here we are, and heading into game three of the final best of five of play-ins. Cloud9 wanting to get through just a clean 3-0. Peace, want to stay alive, and rally, give themselves a chance to reverse sweep. Now, if there was ever a time to run 131, I feel like Cloud9 are playing the 131 comp. You even have a little disengage out of Lee Sin for the three, so everything's kind of built in nicely. Obviously, you can build to get some lane leads here. I uh, can't expect there won't be aggressive play. It is uh, not Ignite for Fudge, it is Flash. It is also double Moby Summoners for perks, which makes sense. That is kind of the thing you always do. As a reminder, if you do want to have a chat with us, you can use Verizon 5G or Champ. Perhaps your musings on the internet will be featured on the broadcast. Welcome Everyone, do your best. Submit your thing. best blabber Olaf joke. Yes. Maybe it'll show up. I assume that's what the competition is. This is all Twitter's probably talking about right now. Yeah, there was a lot of that and oh, Gordrinka. Oh, yeah. <laughs> which uh, Those things are obviously related. <laughs> Gorex, or Gore Drinker, Sterix getting a lot of uh, attention as well. Both teams are rushing into the bot lane, dropping a ward down there, and then resetting. Getting Swap. early control of that brush. I mean, given how uh, bloody the level one has been in the bottom lane 2v2, perhaps that's a good ward to have. Yeah, but it's interesting how they did it too. I mean, it was perks running down there, getting it, and then swapping the trinket after dropping the ward, uh, the sweeper trinket, excuse me. Uh, Aladoric doing the same thing. So Minion the nice thing about it for Aladoric is if you think you want brush control to find these engages, you're going to have the sweeper to get rid of future wards by Cloud9. See what uh, perks gets up to with his as well. Have seen his trend to be already. Uh, once in this tournament, if you're unfamiliar with Trindamir, uh, I have the crash course for you. It's very easy. Uh, you go into your lane, you hit the minions. If the enemy champion gets near you and it's reasonable to hit them, you hit the enemy champion. And you repeat that for 25 minutes until the game ends. <laughs> Sometimes uh, 45 minutes. Chicken them if they're physical and they're hitting you to mm -hmm. drop the AD. You get the heal um, as well. Just hit, keep hitting minions. Yep, just hit minions, heal, regen through lane phase. Quite boring of a champion. Uh, this time around, with Peace's bot lane contesting, uh, or helping, excuse me, Nidalee on the clear, will mean they can't contest the level one from C9's bot lane, which was something that they had been doing quite well through the first two games. Here you see just kind of having to sack their, their control over it right now. Definitely uh, curious to see how Babip can do. We've had definitely eyes on the jungle matchup so far this series, and it has delivered. Level obviously getting the better of that second game, but that's... It's going to be true for almost anyone in that kind of position. But Babas Nidalee is fierce. And Blabber definitely knows his way around the champion, as Ven is the one trying to get aggressive now. This is more what they were looking for here. And now they hit level two, and Peace just have to back off completely as perks. That's what the sweep was for. I like that. And it knows he's going to get the lane push. Immediately gets out and tries to maintain vision control and spot off where the enemy jungle is. Make sure they don't have vision either. Same thing he did in the, the first 
Tryndamere game that he played, knowing that he gets to push really early with the E-Start, uh, just auto-pushing the wave and then going to the enemy Raptor camp. Last time he stole, stole a couple of the little chickens. This time around, spots the Nidalee and just goes, hey, I found her, everybody, and allows C9's bot lane, who already kind of knew that they would have the free uh, safe push, just actually go as hard as they want. Ooh, going really straight for here. The dive, it looks good. Whoa. There is first blood out as Ven. A much better go this time around. Elodora gets some battle back, but Ignite's already down, and Ven's finally even get a turret played out of the deal there. Yeah, much better start to the lane phase for Cloud9, showing that game one may be a little bit of a fluke on their part, making some mistakes, showing that they actually can not pilot the Nami Lucian. Uh, a very uh, aggressive level two dive out of them. And as you said, somewhat enabled by the fact that Perk's got the extra info, blabbing out down here to the bottom side of the map, looking for the revisit. Violet did not use his flash, did only use the heal there. But uh, not going to step too far forwards. Van also out of the lane, so no threat right now. But this was just so clean out of C9. Yeah, Vulcan's going to throw uh, the W on there to get the bounce proc, as well as the E onto the Lucian. And I mean, that was it. Didn't need the bubble. Didn't even have bubble uh, yet. Just the extra passive from Lucian getting the on hit damage. The double taps come through as well. Q just blew him up. Yep, Nami's electrocute procking in that state as well. So really nice stuff there for C9. Commanding it all for their all-in. Perfectly calculated there by Zven and Vulcan. Looking good there for first blood. I believe that's the first blood, first first blood they've gotten all series. So it but feels it, good to kind of bring it back in the bot lane. I was going to say, all of them have been in the bot lane, yeah. though. It's just, it's just their first time getting it, I think. <laughs> yes, I think that's true. Face breaker there for Chachi, trying to get Fudge out of the way. Fudge just uh, continues to snip the minions. As Perks is going to spin on Tally, because Vulcan's here with the level 3 Nami room. You know, that's a normal sentence. Yeah, even though on the Nami, still happy to get out of lane phase. Has to be a little careful about how he gets back to lane now. Cut off by Alidor Babbit. Ah, but Blabber, the one debated in, has to burn the flash though for Vulcan. Perks still spinning around and no dive forward coming. Blabber launches the Q out into the stratosphere, but doesn't quite connect. And Perks is going to push this wave and then get away. Stun actually hits there, but Perks is happy to battle Tally. Still got the Nami in the back pocket. Potentially setting up a dive here onto Chachi. Oh, this is going to be a weird play because everyone's trying to cut off the top lane jungle. Yeah. So Fudge had it set up. The wave is in position as well, but everyone knows what's going on. So it looks like Perks is just going to try and cancel Oriko. Spin away. Does have Broom plating proc. Vulcan now moving back to Blabba. Perks fending off two right now. Teleport coming in this time. That's Chachi back out of base, but Perks and Blabba want to kill. Aladora getting chopped up by the big sword. There is a 1v1 dive. It's happening as well. Are you kidding me? Perks is going to get jumped up by Tally. Sven is to Violet 1v1. Cloud9 trying to make a play literally everywhere. And Sven's the one that gets it off camera. Only a single kill in that situation. But my god, Cloud9 are pressuring so hard. Budge slamming top lane, winning that trade, forcing Chachi back to base. Chachi wants to heal and reset off that and TP into that mid lane fight they thought was going to break out. But Cloud9 just disengaged there. And it was a bit of a magic trick while you're watching the mid lane down the bot side. In the other hand, Cloud9 with Sven diving the MF. Only at 16 CS. Just <coughs> absolutely brutal. Level 3 still to yeah. the level 5 of Lucian. That's a big diff. Violet is going to hit 4 here off these minions, but that is a huge deficit. 20 plus CS up as well. And hey, let's, just, let's watch this one. Yeah, I mean, it's already chunked Violet down to around half health uh, prior to the dive happening. And then it's... Just land the ability. So yeah. there's, there's really not too much more to go on there. I mean, maybe Violet could have flashed the Q damage of the Lucian. I mean, if you're really tricky, you can get that off. It, it is kind of difficult. Um, but other than that, it was just you know, too high level. Oh, Tally getting chopped. Perks does not have six. Wants to commit, heals himself. Blabber looks for the Q, doesn't land it. And Tally will live. And so as much as, hold on here, Vanguard's Edge popped out, Perks, no ulti, can't make the mistake at least, as Gwen now going back in, Fudge with his own solo kill now, takes out Vizachachi in the top lane. Ooh, the set counter pick into the Gwen, not looking that great, would have expected it to be a difficult matchup in general, Gwen can be kind of difficult to deal with for some melee matchups. Oh, it's looking pretty suspect here for Peace. Yeah, early game once again. In favor of Cloud9, up almost 2,000 gold, but the individual lane leads are starting to get a little wild. I mean, Perks is continuing to play aggressive and get attention, which is almost working in a lot of these cases, but Sven is massively far ahead still individually. Fudge is starting to get a foothold in that matchup and can likely break that open. And again, <laughs> Aladoric just gets deleted by Sven, who pops the calling. He is still two levels ahead of Violet. Yeah, Aladoric just with that electrocute proc from the Nami gets exploded before his W even triggers. It's just dead before it can happen. 
Vulcan all over the map right now, making things happen. All right, no flash here for Vulcan. Is a target. Violet going to let it rip. Damage is enough. Babbitt going to get one back, which is nice. Fend low on mana and a little low on health. Is not going to... Is going to be able... Is going to dodge that Q, is what I'm trying to say. And going to be a OK, but Vulcan, not so lucky. Yeah, look at that total gold graph. Sven there dominating. Vulcan has more gold than Violet. <laughs> oh, no. You hate to see it. Not going well for the Peace Bot lane, unfortunately for them. Tally with a stun here, once again contending in the 2v2, but Blabber just kicks him. Perks will run in here forever, and Blabber activates Q when the shield is down, tries to time it right, gets it good enough. And now Aladoric in trouble, gonna get slowed down. Blabber looking for it, doesn't have the kick, but one more Q will do it, doesn't get it, but Aladoric is gonna be pushed out of mid lane. Red Smite almost finishing him off there, not quite able to do it. As we see some more trading on the top side. Very scrappy game so far. <laughs> He's trying to find their way back into it. Babbitt gets the one kill on the Nami, but like you said, you want that shutdown on the Lucian for sure. So insanely rich for Sven already. And what I was trying to talk about earlier, we mentioned a little bit at the top of the series where I think so much of this, like initial plan is to try and control Babbitt, which makes sense. Lilia needed to be banned throughout this whole series, but I was curious what was going to happen with Nidalee, and I guess this is the answer. Like, Babbitt didn't want to go to it, wants to go to it this game, which makes sense. It's his most played champion, easily his one of his best and his most comfortable champions in an elimination game. And even though he's playing fine, the rest of the map is on fire. Like, yeah. Lilia can at least find a way back into the game from here with her ultimate to make a play. Nidalee does not have that luxury when your team falls behind. And you can just see how screwed their bot lane is. They can't even contest anything out of the Lucian, so they just let Sven hammer away on the turret and say, okay, we have to go top, get out of this lane phase and grab this Rift Herald. It's a nice consolation prize, but it's much nicer for Sven to say, oh, I don't even care. I can just keep pounding away on this bot turret. <laughs> All right, we have a little Verizon 5G Ultra here from Yoshikira22. <laughs> if Perks doesn't press R again, he should officially name change to Pex. you love to see it. As uh, Perks is going in, Rift Herald's dead as we saw, but uh, Tally may be dead as well. Dashes away to the Raptor, a little nice escape there as Rift Herald's dropped topside. They will trade for the towers. Unfortunately, the bandy says Sven already got it and all the plates for himself down in that bottom lane. Yeah, Sven is absolutely monstrous, pushing another wave, still going. Now working at the inner turret, it looks like, as he leaves to go roam into river. The C9 also grabbed the dragon a little bit during that sequence, so uh, get the first one in their pocket for Blabber. C9's done a good job of controlling dragons pretty early on throughout the entirety of play-ins. Definitely uh, something I feel like they've been focusing on. Obviously, with this kind of game, pretty straightforward to go back and take it. A little later on this one, uh, we will not get a Cloud Soul this game around. Not three for three, unfortunately. Uh, it cannot be the case. Given that Cloud, Cloud Dragon was the first one, it's going to be either Infernal or Ocean, which is always good news. And already C9 moving into the 1 3 1 lane setup just 10 minutes into the game. They have a ton of vision control. Uh, Peace getting some back now in the bot river, but you can also see in the top side multiple pink wards for Cloud 9. Feeling great. Uh, we'll have to see where they go from here. And one thing I gotta say is the, the roaming Nami support is kind of just the NA playstyle right now. A lot of North American supports love roaming. Uh, Sven is getting shot by Aladoric, but the title wave's coming in. Violet falls to flash it, but Aladoric has oh, he takes been it. tagged by Blabber. In he goes and still lives to tell the tale. Blabber picking one off there. Yeah, just not enough damage to finish him off and no CC to lock him up under the turret. So very clean kill for Blabber there. Still pairing up with Vulcan. The two of them moving around the map now. Want to transfer this pressure up to the top side. Tally recognizes he cannot stay underneath this turret. So Fudge gets some alone time on it. Keep working down these turret plates. And this is exactly where I was talking about with the roaming supports for any. Uh, they had a number of the supports in the highest of uh, roam percentage across the world in playoffs when a number of teams were not moving around the map this time. We had basically 0% duo procs for 4JJ during that time. And this is what they love to do. They want to fight you all over the map. Uh, Blabba maybe a little too far full, but not punished for it just yet. Sven, the one to try and find the punish, doesn't quite get Babbitt. As Chachi looking for the engage here. No one up the river just yet, although Violet's looking to make it happen. Bubble is going to be dodged out in C9. It looks like they got away with this one. Fudge over the walls, Ven still battling. Aladoric doesn't have his ulti, so there's just nothing here for peace. Yeah, Cloud9 want to keep baiting him forward too, because during this time, Perks is in the bot lane, just working away, pushing in minions. Cloud9 force pressure away from him. Peace try to respond, can't find anything though. And it's about to be the catering company here for Cloud9. There's so many plates taken off these towers. <laughs> 
Two in top side, looking like two again here in mid. Sven already got all five. He's looking for like a seven or eight plate game for himself. In fact, he's got a minute and a half left. Might be able to get more depending on how much C9 wants to commit to pushing these lanes, but just so much extra gold given over to Cloud9, given over to Sven in particular, who already has that Gale Force finished. I believe he beat out Blabber for the first Mythic of the game, but can't be that close. Once again, they're both off to the races. Definitely the case. Dragon in a minute 40. Maybe we'll have a little bit of downtime for my non sequitur here. Uh, I'm ready. At the start of, of uh, Plants, I was tweeting with Hi. We were kind of teasing each other about if he'd actually be awake for it or not, and I was supposed to call him out in the main broadcast. This is going a little bit later in the day than I meant <laughs> to do it because, uh, you know, these games have been pretty bloody. But Hi, if you're listening, tweet at me. Let me know that you're there. Um, what's your favorite breakfast item? The other 300,000 people watching, I don't care. <laughs> Save your tweets. This is just a check to see if High's awake. Hey, you guys can tweet at him too. Yeah. De tweet at High, definitely. And it is timestamp, so we'll know if he's awake. It's 8.35 on 5 my clock, here at least on the West Coast of the United States. Wherever you are in the world, I thank you so much for tuning in. As top side, we've got some trouble brewing. Ella Doric with the quickness finds Fudge. Blabber goes back in and pops the gold drinker. His favorite button to press does look good. And he somehow gets the kill out of the deal because Sven... The, uh, the absolute terror of the top lane right now, I suppose, is letting a rip on a visit. Chachi calls in there as Vulcan picks up the credit for the kill. And Fabio is going back in, but Sven, beautiful flash out of there. As the spear will not connect, Urban Flow out of Vulcan to keep him healthy as Aldoric in trouble. It is Blabber finding that Q, rides the lightning there in on towards Violet. Great bubble there onto the Nami, kills him off there as Perk is able to get it. It's actually the Gwen that finds it because Perk is taking towers in the bot lane. It's basically a 4v5 and Cloud9 can do no wrong. Babip going to be slain here by Blabber. That's a sentence as he will get that kill now on a rampage and Fudge trying to complete the around the world ace. Will let one go. Aldoric lives to tell the tale as Ven takes the top tower and this game's getting ridiculous moxie that 4v5 for cloud nine comes out in their favor don't give a single kill up during it grab four more of their own and oh god they just have such great champions for scrapping lucian nami lee sin even gwen you know are all champions who are very good in extended fights nami just constantly topping people off and it all started uh you know just with some initial good trading as they collapsed down onto the gwen and forced chachi's alt out early and then while this tp is coming in the important part is how quickly Vulcan lands the bubble. Well timed there to stop Tally from basically being able to do anything. With him dead, it's basically still a 4v3 because the MF has such a hard time getting involved in this fight. She wants to come in there, but she can't run through anybody. And during this time, the rest of these is just pinned up uh, against the turret. A lot of kills oh that they just want goodness. to finish them off. Oh my god! <laughs> okay, if you didn't see how that started, that was very funny. I will call the moment though, because Perks is busy spinning away from the rest in peace. Now, if it's a touch coming in, great base breaker finds two. TP coming in though for Cloud9. We'll see what happens there as the Ebb and Flow still coming out for Vulcan. Needs to stay alive. Blabber though finds it onto Tally at the back end of it. Perks still chopping down trees as Vizachachi is the next to fall in the forest. Blabber unstoppable as Cloud9 looking to maybe dive through the turrets. They will. The tier two don't exist. Perks is letting it go. Gets what? another. Everybody back up as Perks getting crazy under the towers. Uh, I guess Cloud9 still have a little bit of restraint left in them. Did not go underneath the inhibitor turret. Back off there. Sven finishes off the outer turret. Begins working on the inner. While the rest of Cloud9 dissipates after what is another crazy skirmish around mid lane. And uh, I don't think we'll get a replay of it, which is okay. But if you wonder what happened in mid lane, Perks basically popped W, slowed down whoever's in mid. Oh, we are going to oh, get gonna it. Give it Let's go. They're going to get it for you. Don't That's worry. the X refund. Oh, no! <laughs> Killing spree takes on the MF. Tower the fastest, is gonna go down. The fastest action replay you're ever gonna see. I give, bring it back. Dude, that was a sick replay. Did you see how Perks ran down lane for a second? Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty much the story of that kill. I hope we get it again, but if we don't. Oh, wait a minute, I'll do. If we don't get it, I'll retell the story. We're at, we're at a kill per minute here. 16 kills, 60 minutes. Look like we're going to get some more Tough right now. Tough to squeeze it in. Tally back in there. In a 1v3, they can't survive. It's Blabber. Six kills and counting. Now dominating here in this game is Cloud9. Looking at that final spot in the group stage, Mark. Yeah, looking like an inevitability at this point. Over 10,000 gold up. Continuing to just slam peace for the second game in a row. Almost a perfect game, if not for the one turret and the one kill in Peace's favor. Let's see if they can catch ball again. Nope. <laughs> <Little bust turn. laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I wonder if Shelly can bop you midair and stop you from getting over the wall through the oh, blast cone. That, that be, almost happened there. That would be a savage way to die. <laughs> you know, people die to like, oh, I like got knocked up by the Baron because I like, yeah. wasn't watching my feet. You know, that happens sometimes at Shelly betrayal. Yeah, you that have to have be, your uh... teammate attack 
Shelly yeah. will aggro her to get the charge and hit you. And I don't know. I don't know. Oh, this, this is a play by plays game, man. This yep. is, I, I'm the color. It's, I'm working worlds. I'm feeling good. Shut up, Mark. You don't get to talk. We're getting kills. All right. Well, I guess we're not going to get it, which is okay. I will recap what would have happened there. Uh, basically, Trinity found a slow, and then the Nami tidal wave just rolled on in, and it was like fast animal slow children. It just there was no escaping Trinity running you down there in mid lane. Uh, Perks has been a little bit on the island this time. Him and Gwen both only at two zero three. The side laners not having as much fun as Nami and Blabber. Need to go grouping up mid again, forcing Peace to respond to him. It's so early into the game. And C9 just have so much control. It's very difficult for Peace to even try to go cross map right now when so many turrets already dropped down. Yeah, five to one. Uh, opened up pretty much everywhere here. So C9 have taken complete control of whatever half of the map they tend to be on right now. It's the top lane protecting the uh, split push of Fudge. Sven is. I don't want to say vulnerable. Great tidal wave there. Finds three for Vulcan. Ooh. Disengages. And there's the flank with the boss cone. Very spicy. Blabber finds a kick on a visit Chachi. Not the target he wanted, but hey, I think at this point, there are no bad targets when you're this far ahead. Yeah, Blabber just had itchy trigger finger, had the flank. Nice triple bubble by Vulcan as well. Start that fight off, but just didn't have an angle to really get going. What is this? Position swapping back over this little ridge. Everyone's spinning over the wall. Fudge is like, guys, I'm trying to end the game. Please come assist me. Blabber does a drop the Rift Herald hearing that call. And uh, C9 are going to break an inhibitor tower here, potentially. At 19 minutes into the game, Perks is just split in mid. That tower is dead. Cloud9 going for it. Aladoric looking for it. Finds the charm on his van, but it's so far back that it just doesn't matter. It's a double kill already for Sven. It's absolute carnage it's here for Cloud9. It's going to be an ace. 19 minutes through a quadra kill. Dancing Shelly. Out of Sven. Dancing Shelly on the table. Cloud9 trying to punch that ticket into the wall. No, the turret's going to kill her. Oh, no. no. The tragedy of the end for Shelly, but a victory for Cloud9 as they will take the sweep, take down Peace, and finish pushing one step further into the world's 2021 group stage. 21 kills to one, a 19 30 minute game, almost a dancing Shelly. If they just could have finished off that last turret shot, Cloud9 <sighs> have to feel good after that one. I mean, it's expected win. You wanted to see them have a very strong performance. They absolutely dominated game two and game three after a close game one and they will be making their appearance in the main stage now as expected maybe a bit different of a path than people would have thought losing the tiebreaker to dfm i'm sure that will hang over them a little bit but at the very least you are where you expect to be you're still going to be in group a because with this outcome the groups are already decided for yep. where each team must go there is no group draw we don't need it it's already drawn the group draw we did before is good enough for this one is uh Aladaric having a very good one i mean in general peace should be happy with their level of play. As always, they continue to show that, hey, we might be a small region, but don't underestimate us. I think when little is expected of you, it's easy to be unexpected, but it's very difficult to be impressive.